DeepSeek R1 is a chain of thought frontier model that's open source and that you can use at a fraction of the price of the other industry leaders. But how can we leverage this model to make our AI agent smarter? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use R1 to direct your AI agent team to achieve better results. But before we begin, there's two key aspects of this to consider. The first is that neither DeepSeek V3 or R1 actually support tool calling. So they can't be used directly in AI agents. But that doesn't mean that you can't use them to improve your AI agents or your multi-agent teams. The second aspect is there are reasonable data privacy concerns over the DeepSeq suite of models. There are questions as to whether your data is gonna be used to train future models, and also that your data is stored in Chinese data centers and governed by Chinese data laws. And those laws don't necessarily align to the EU or the US's data privacy standards. So to tackle the data privacy issue first, the key differentiator with the DeepSeek models is that they're open source, so you can host them anywhere. In this video, I'll be using DeepSeek R1 on Fireworks AI. Fireworks are headquartered in California, and they have a zero data retention policy. The cost of inference on Fireworks is higher than DeepSeek servers in China, but it's still significantly lower than OpenAI's uh, O1 model, for example. The next aspect is that R1 currently can't call tools directly. And while this is true, there is still huge value in having R1 reflect on user messages that are going to an AI agent, and then to rewrite them into much clearer instructions for the AI agent to follow. This is very common in RAG systems, where you'd have a feature that rewrites a user's query before it goes to a RAG knowledge base and that generally tends to produce kind of better quality results. Last week, I published the first of our multi-agent blueprints, which was for a newsletter AI agent team. You can check that out above. And in this video, I'll be making adjustments to that multi-agent team so you can see how R1 can direct operations. An issue with that system is that the newsletter director agent or its sub-agents can get stuff wrong. And a lot of the time, this is down to semi-garbled voice notes by me on WhatsApp asking it to do certain things, very much in context as well. I could just be saying, okay, publish that, taken out of context, who knows what I'm talking about. So because there is the possibility of agents calling the wrong tools, depending on how it interprets your request, I built a human in the loop safeguard feature in that system to make sure that it doesn't spam a Facebook audience or a newsletter list by publishing over and over again. So with the addition of R1 into the system, our semi-garbled voice notes on WhatsApp through to this agent team can be reflected on by R1, can be rewritten and restructured into kind of a highly refined instructions that go to the supervisor who can then relay and direct operations within the worker agents. And from testing, this has removed a lot of the ambiguity and it has produced a lot better results, albeit a lot slower. And I think this is important. This multi-agent team is a virtual assistant. From my perspective, accuracy is crucial and I'm happy to wait for the right accurate kind of action or response. If it's a customer facing application, responsiveness is crucial. And I would not be adding chain of thought reasoning models into a customer facing application where you need a response within a few seconds. If you'd like to get access to this AI agent team powered by DeepSeek R1, then check out the link in the description to our community, the AI Automators, where you'll be able to download this full blueprint. So this is the one that I put up a few days ago. And we have detailed instructions, all of the blueprints for the NADN agents, as well as all of the agent tools. And then we also have regular workshops, an active discussions board, and a number of different courses that you might find interest in to help you level up your AI automation skills. So here's a quick look at the system design from last week's video. What we have, we have a series of triggers to trigger the agent team, be it WhatsApp, Telegram, or N8N chat. This team is built on N8N. Then that goes to a newsletter director. This is GPT-40 who then relays through the use of tools to its sub-agents. Those sub-agents essentially have their own tools then as well to trigger different actions. This is a newsletter kind of agent team. So there's the ability to write newsletters based off research, publish them to ConvertKit, and then share on social media as well. And then responses to the requests are then relayed back via WhatsApp, Telegram, or NADN chat. So the changes we'll be making to the system then, we'll be adding in DeepSeek R1 to work alongside the kind of the tools calling agent. So these are, let's say, the worker agents that carry out the actions needed. We have now our supervisor agent, and DeepSeek R1 is gonna act as the planner or the director and will relay instructions from WhatsApp or Telegram, i.e. from the user. It'll look into the conversation history. It'll take into the context, you know, what the team is about, and then it'll relay detailed instructions to the supervisor agent, which will remove a lot of the ambiguity when it's communicating with its sub-agent. We'll still leave the supervisor agent, who is the coordinator of the sub-agents, and we'll still leave that as GPT-40, 
because we do want them calling the right tools. It does need a level of sophistication. It would be great to swap this out for DeepSeek version three, but again, that also doesn't support tool calling. So we can't do that just yet. Okay, and then this is the N8N newsletter director agent blueprint. We have our WhatsApp trigger. There's also a webhook and a chat trigger. This is the, the meet and drink of the newsletter agent team where the director agent coordinates and orchestrates with the sub agents. These are all different workflows on N8N. And then this is the kind of response section where it responds via WhatsApp. And there's a Telegram version of this as well. So the changes we've made then, so what we've done is we've added in a chat memory manager, which gets messages essentially. It's hooked up to the same memory bank as the supervisor agent. So the full kind of back and forth that the supervisor is having with its various tools and with the DeepSeek R1 director um, is stored in this memory. And we load this up here because then in our DeepSeek R1 director node, I'll click into it here, I have a detailed prompt. Let me just zoom in so you can see it. So you are the central coordinator slash director for an AI agent team. You've received the following chat message. Now, this is just the, uh, the input from the various different triggers. Your task is to analyze this chat message in the context of the conversation history below and provide a clear plan of action for the supervisor to carry out with his workers. And then I also put in the background context, which is important. So yeah, the Dublin Property Insider is an email newsletter, provides in-depth in analysis on Dublin's real estate market. That's important because from a WhatsApp perspective, if you drop a voice note to say, you know, is there any news? It knows that you're looking for, you know, Dublin real estate news, not, you know, what's the weather like. Then we communicate the structure of the team to DeepSeek R1. So we explain that there is a supervisor agent and their role is to communicate with the workers. And then we also explain the roles of the workers. So there's a research agent tool which can fetch kind of web pages, carry out Google searches. And this is a highly specialized tool around uh, real estate uh, transaction queries. And there's a writer agent, a publisher agent, which can draft kind of convert kit emails, analytics agent, social media agent, etc. So we're, we're kind of communicating to our one that this is the nature of the team. We're providing the task, which is analyze and reflect on the user's message. We're then also providing the conversation history, which we loaded up with a chat memory manager. So that's this one here. And then we also provide a couple of specifics. And this one's very important. So only plan tasks for workers where you believe they can actually complete the task. So this reduces hallucinations a little bit where if the supervisor was to go to the publisher to say, you know, publish this on TikTok, it might just say, okay, I've published that on TikTok, even though it might not be a tool that's available in its arsenal. So by putting this in, we're providing clear instructions that you should only provide the tasks based on the capabilities of the uh, sub agents. So for the type of N8N node this is, you can see here our supervisor agent is has this little robot icon. So this is an AI agent node. Because DeepSeek doesn't support tool calling, we're just using a standard kind of basic LLM chain here. And what we're doing then is we're connecting up the Fireworks AI model. So if I double click on this, I've created the credentials to connect with Fireworks AI. I'm then specifying the model. So accounts, Fireworks model is DeepSeek R1. And then important is to set a timeout. These reasoning models can take time to actually output their chain of thought to reach a conclusion. I've set this at five minutes. So it is important to increase the timeout for this. And just to quickly jump into the credentials here, if you want to connect to Fireworks AI, you need to go to credentials, click create credential, and then you need to choose open AI, which is a bit counterintuitive because then what you're doing is you're dropping in the Fireworks AI's base URL here and the Fireworks AI's API key. So essentially, because you're choosing open AI, it's just a standard interface for kind of chat completions. And that's what you can see here. So this is the base URL for the Fireworks API, and that's the Fireworks API key. So that's it with the timeout set. Then we have this connected to this code node. And the reason for this is Fireworks outputs the chain of thought as well as the message. So let's test this out and you can see it. We'll just say, hello, how are you? And you can see then that's uh, gone to Fireworks. It's thinking about it and it's formulating a, a chain of thought and then a response. Okay, and that's come back. So now if we click into this, so here you can see we have these think tags. So it's all right. So the user said the greeting, hello, how are you? Considering the conversation history is empty because it's the start of a conversation. It's the, yeah, it's the start of an interaction. So what do I need to do? So it figures out a lot of what it needs to do here. 
this is a very simple request, probably doesn't need chain of thought, but you kind of get the idea. And then it finishes thinking, which you can see with this closing think tag, and then it provides like a plan of action, <laughs> immediate response, send a polite acknowledgement. In this code node then, we're splitting or we're, de we're delimiting this kind of message from the director so that we have the thinking on one side and the actual message on the other. Because we don't want to send the reasoning or the chain of thought to a GPT-40 or to the supervisor agent, because that'll just confuse things. We just want to send the message. So that's the plan of action. And then we come down here to the supervisor agent. And then the, the, the text that we're sending the supervisor agent is essentially what we delimited in that code node. And then here's the output here. Hello, I'm doing well. Welcome to the Dublin Property Insider. How can I assist you today? Are you looking for market insights, etc.? So even that's very different to your standard response to a hello, how are you to an LLM. So let's try something a little bit more sophisticated. So can you check to see if there's any news? So that, that's kind of vague. Are we talking about news in general, real estate news? If this is a newsletter. Are we talking about any updates on the newsletters? Okay, so that's finished loading. And now it's gone to the supervisor agent, which is going to the research agents to carry out the research. And interestingly, this has gone to the writer agent now. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the Deep Sea Core one prompt was, because can you check to see if there's any news shouldn't really be going to a writer agent? Okay, that's finished. So here's a snapshot of recent Dublin property news. Yeah, interested to see why it went to the writer agent. So let's see what the input and output was. Oh yeah, please synthesize the following research findings into a concise bullet point news summary for the, the newsletter. Okay, so it has outputted quite a lot, but it looks like the supervisor agent has actually summarized that. So there might be a little playing around with that supervisor agent prompt just to make sure it relays kind of outputs directly. You can see in the intermediate steps, it went to the research agent and it said execute a Google search. So actually, let's go back up to DeepSeek R1, the message. So the plan of action, number one, research phase. Go to the research agent to execute Google search for recent property news. It even says what search terms to use. Step two, for relevant articles, use the Fetch web page markdown. That's excellent. R writer agent to synthesize research agents' findings into a concise bullet point news summary. I actually like that because I like the idea of the supervisor agent using its sub agents to carry out the work and not for it to start doing it itself. It even gives a structured example. That's great. So like, this is great prompt engineering. You know, it's you're providing like a multi-shot prompt here. And it even provided for the supervisor agent a message template, you know, so here's a snapshot of property news. Would you like to add this to the next newsletter draft? Expand on it, check related analytics. That's really nice. That's a great example of a much more fleshed out kind of user prompt sent to the supervisor agent, all based off this kind of single, can you check to see if there's any news? And that could be much more tightly defined then by making kind of changes to the, the actual prompt itself. So let's try one more. So let's say for the news about the price increase, can you draft a Facebook post, generate an AI image? Let's see how much we can get done here. Uh, draft a newsletter on ConvertKit. So that's quite a detailed, sophisticated prompt and multiple actions across multiple tools across multiple sub agents. So let's see how it performs. So I've gone to the research agent because I have mentioned for that news about the price increase. So it needs to fetch what that was. So back to the model. So this is a nice example of kind of sequential tool calling as opposed to concurrent tool calling, where based off the output of that, it's now going to go to the next tool. Sometimes it can trigger multiple tools at the same time if, there, if there's no dependencies between them. And like that, yeah, the writer agent and the publisher agent, because the publisher agent has the ability to generate AI images. So it's not necessarily publishing the newsletter because the writer would have to finish it, but it's probably generating the image at this point. Okay, back to GPT-40. Now, will it go to the publisher agent again? It should, because the output of the writer agent will have the newsletter draft. Yeah, it didn't. That's interesting. That's interesting because this whole system design of using agents as tools isn't as sophisticated as some of the more dedicated multi-agent systems like what Flowwise have. So Flowwise, it's like a chain of thought multi-agent system kind of built in. You could set up to 100 kind of recursions through the worker agents. So there can be, you know, massive back and forths between a team. Whereas when you're dealing with a kind of agents as a tool, there is a natural limitation to how many tools and how big of a sequence it can kind of work through. So here's your requested content. So we have our Facebook post draft, which looks good. There's our AI image, which the publisher agent uh, created. It's using Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra. Uh, text obviously needs some work. Edit the prompt if needed. And we have our convert kit draft. Cool. Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. There's our convert kit draft. That looks great. So then at this point, let's say we could just make a change. We'll just remove, let's say, that placeholder. 
and save. I've made a couple of changes, let's say, on the email newsletter. So can you publish that email newsletter? And for the Facebook post, let's just say remove all emojis and publish it. Great, so that's triggered. And we are using a human in the loop system for publishing newsletters and posting to Facebook. So I will be getting a WhatsApp message in a minute to actually approve these uh, publications. Okay, so that's gone to the agent again. It's hit the writer agent and the publisher agent. Um, writer agent probably just to remove the emojis, was it? Yeah, I'll revise the Facebook post to remove all emojis and that didn't take long. Gone to the publisher agent. Now go to the social media agent, brilliant. And then yeah, the revised Facebook post has been submitted for publication. So the email newsletter has been published. There's the revised post. Agent Safeguard will prompt you to approve publication. That's perfect. A lot of the tools we've built for the system are on make.com. So having a quick look at this make scenario, you can see that this triggered and it has sent the message on WhatsApp. So that's the, that's both the request publication of the ConvertKit email, as well as the publication of the Facebook post. And then here is the WhatsApp message. So this is the Agent Safeguard, the human in the loop system that we built. And that's the request to publish the Facebook post. This one is to publish the ConvertKit email. Again, you can click to see exactly what is to be published. And then if you click on the link to approve, that comes through as accepted. And then that's what sends through, we've published the email newsletter on ConvertKit. So I think that's a nice system design to use the likes of a, a chain of thought model like R1 to provide kind of the plan of action for a supervisor agent to engage with its sub agents like that. Timeouts is something to consider. So as I mentioned, increasing the timeout here is important. Within N8 and Cloud, um, if you look at max execution time of workflows, on the starter plan, it's five minutes. So that is a consideration. On the pro plan, it's 40 minutes. So it'll definitely work well on pro. Obviously, if you're self-hosting, you can kind of make those kind of execution engine exchanges yourself on the server. But from the testing here on the starter plan, it's actually worked quite well with that level of chain of thought needed. If you'd like to get access to this blueprint so you can set it up and play around with it yourself, then check out the link in the description to our community, the AI Automators, where you'll be able to access and download all of our system templates, which you can see here. We have a new agent tool section because these kind of agent tools are now microservices, essentially, that you can plug in and out of agents and agents. So we have a full tool section that we're building out day by day. And we also have some interesting courses, events and workshops, and a very kind of active discussions board where you can get support for your system in, in real time. We'd love to see you here. So yeah, check out the link in the description for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.